tier ranking the best 50 horror books of all time, according to Paste Magazine, which is an online pop culture website. Their list was uh, compiled by several members of the staff of Paste Magazine, so it's kind of all over the place. Some of these books on the list definitely deserve to be among the top 50. Some of them definitely do not. It's kind of a mess, so I'm going to put it all together in correct order for you or for us. So five categories, starting with uh, the bottom fail. This book failed on me. I think it's a fail of a book. Now, I have not read all 50 books. So for the books that I have not read, um, two categories. Uh, no thank you. So I have no interest in reading this book for a variety of reasons. And then there are quite a few books on this list that I intend to read or that I'm interested in reading. So maybe someday. And then the other two categories, uh, books that are uh, pretty good, they're okay. Or like okay to pretty good. So there are worse ways to die. And then finally, a horror gem. That's a book that's spectacular or that I really loved. And when I put a book in that category, I'm gonna take a drink. And feel free to uh, play along at home. Now I have organized the 50 books and we can see here, according to the ranking on um, Pace Magazine, starting with number 50 and there are 50 books and I wanna do this relatively quickly. So let's jump in. We'll start with The Summer Is Ended and We Are Not Yet Saved. Now uh, this is a camp slasher. Uh, I love the title. I, for some reason, I'm not a big Bible guy. But I love that. Uh, I love that quote. I love that passage. Uh, it's from the book of Jeremiah. The harvest is past. The summer is ended, and we are not yet saved. Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? I don't know why. For some reason, I love that passage. It's that line. Is there no balm in Gilead? It's so hyper specific. I love it. Anyway, so this book is not about the Bible. This book is um, a summer camp slasher and yeah i could definitely see myself uh being in the mood for a summer camp slasher one day so yeah maybe i will read it. i've heard good things i've heard it's pretty gory too next up we have the woman in black the woman in black is a ghost story and i have no interest in ghosts because i am not a child so i have not read that and never will i read it uh moving on we have night things which is a, an 80s um, haunted house story um, I've heard mixed things about it. I've heard it's pretty goofy, kind of throws everything at you. Uh, Haunted House, uh, from the 1980s. No, I'll pass on that. Next, we have something more recent. We have My Best Friend Exorcist by Grady Hendrix. And this book is a huge fail for many reasons. I did not like that book at all. Moving on, we have Ring. Uh, the Ring is another ghost story. I have not read it. I uh, did see the movie, the American version, and I, I liked the movie okay. It was all right. Uh, but I didn't like it enough to want to read the book. And so I'll pass on that. Next up is A Head Full of Ghosts by Paul Tremblay. Now, this book is YA, borderline YA, and it's about an exorcist or exorcism. Two things I am really not interested in. But for I loved this book. I absolutely loved it. I'm surprised that it worked on me, and it really worked on me. So I'm going to put it in a horror gem, because for me, it was a five-star read. I'm going to take a drink. I and I will not put my glass down so quickly, because we have Clyde Barker up, and Clyde Barker almost automatically gets put in a horror gem. This is his first novel, Damnation Game. I don't think it's his best, but it is spectacular. Horror gem. Next, we have Audition by Ryu Murakami. I have not read this book, but I definitely want to read it because I have read uh, Piercing by him, and I really liked Piercing. So chances are I'm really going to like this one. So that is definitely going on my TBR. I will probably read that later this summer. Next, we have, I cannot see the title, The Devil in Silver. Okay, this is by Victor Laval. I've not read this book. I've read two books by Victor Laval, and I did not like either of them. 
So I am done with him. He is just simply he's a very popular author, but he is not an author that works on me. Next up, we have Bird Box. And if you are a uh, longtime viewer of this channel, you know that I hate that book. So big fail for me. It's a short story stretched, in, stretched to be a, a novel. And I was very upset that I paid 13 euros for a short story. I did not like it. Next up, we have Burnt Offering. And I am very happy to see this book on the list because this is a book that does not get talked about enough. And it is a gem, horror gem. Definitely. It's a kind of a haunted house story. Not really. It's a family. They go on holiday in, in a home on Long Island, I believe. An old home. And the, the woman, uh, the wife in the family, she gets obsessed about cleaning the, the house, restoring the house. And then the house feeds off of her obsession. It's fantastic. Love that book. Next, we have John Dies at the End. I've heard good things about this book. I've heard it's kind of wacky. And Wacky is generally not a selling point for me. So I'm going to put this in the no thank you. But I have heard good things about it. Next up we have Savaging Dark. Now this is a book that I had not heard of before. And, but going through this list I looked into it. And it is about a woman. She is a middle school teacher. And she has an affair with her 11 year old student gross so i love the idea that's that's a very daring premise to explore so i'm definitely curious and i hear it's pretty messed up and i like it messed up next up we have rebecca by daphne du Maurier. i love me some daphne du Maurier. i would not consider this a horror book it's more of a mystery drama about identity but it is a masterpiece and it is a fantastic book so i'm going to put it in the horror gym. Next up we have Geek Love. Geek Love I have not read but it is on my queue or in my queue. Uh, actually it's the next book up in my queue. I'm going to read it in a few weeks because it was published in 1989 and I am finishing up my 10-part uh, video retrospective of horror from the 1980s in that book. It I'm going to read it for that for that retrospective. It's about freak shows or something. I really don't know much about it. I've heard good things. I'm going to go in blindly. But I'm definitely going in. Next up, we have Heart, Heart Shaped Box by uh, Joe Hill. Right? Yeah. Now, I've heard good things about this book. Fortunately, uh, I've only read one book by Joe Hill, and that was Horns. And I did not like it. So I am quite reluctant to give Joe Hill another chance. And also, I hear that this has a protagonist who is a, a fan of, of horror movies, so it's quite a referential book. Which usually, that doesn't work on me, although um, The Head Full of Ghosts is quite referential. And that definitely worked on me. Uh, but yeah, Joe Hill, I'm going to pass on Joe Hill. Um, yeah, I did not have a good experience with Horns. World War Z by Max Brooks. This is a kind of a short story collection, but they're all kind of related short stories about uh, a zombie war, and it is spectacular. Horror gem, definitely. Love that book. I should read more from Max Brooks. That book is great. Next up, we have a classic, The Other by Thomas Tyron. And this book... Um, I didn't love this book. Uh, I get why people would like it. It has an interest. It's an interesting story with a with a twist that works, but it's so confusing to read. It has just, the perspective shifts constantly and shifts around in the story, and it's really hard to follow. And I didn't like the writing style. I didn't love the book. Um, I feel bad putting it next to Bird Box and my best friend's Exorcism, Exorcism, but. It was a fail for me. I don't think it's necessarily a fail for other people. Um, next up, we have Little Star. Now, this is the book by John Lindquist. Uh, I don't know much about this book. I have not read it, obviously. Uh, it's a young girl 
she's kind of she's a found in the woods or something this little baby and then she's raised and she gets put on television at a, a singing contest or something and then she makes friends with another girl and then they go off and do horrific things together or something like that so this is a story about young girls and their friendships and uh, doing horrible things i like the horrible things part i don't like the young girls with their friendships i'm not really that interested in young girls and tele in television singing contest that doesn't sound like my my kind of thing so i'm gonna pass on that next up we have shining girls by lauren bukes this is a serial killer who travels through time to kill girls uh it's pretty graphic um i didn't love this book um i didn't love it because i was a little bit confused uh, again with the time travel kind of threw me off and i really didn't understand why the serial killer was killing these women and uh and it's pretty brutal too um so i didn't love this book but i'm i cannot put this book as a fail so i'm gonna say it's all right there are worse ways to die it is well written but it's hard to follow next up we have girl next door uh by jack ketchum um yeah based on a true story yeah, jack ketchum is brutal i've read i read his first book off season and that was way too much for me and i uh my from what i understand the girl next door is even more intense. oh i don't i don't like reality based on a true story i think so i'm gonna pass on that Next up, we have some H.P. Lovecraft with uh, At the Mountain of Madness, or In the Mountain of Madness. This is my favorite, or one of my favorite H.P. Lovecraft stories. Horror gem it came just in time because I was getting a little bit thirsty. Spectacular story. I loved, I loved the, his faux, like, mockumentary style. It almost reads like it's a nonfiction book. I love that style that he does. He does it very well, and that is a great example of it. And I think it's his scariest, probably one of his scariest books. Next up, we have The Ceremonies by T.E.D. Klein. This book kind of belongs in between Horror Gem and There Are Worse Ways to Die. I can't put it in the Horror Gem category. It just doesn't reach those heights, but it is quite good. It's inventive, well-written. I didn't love the characters so much. I think that's what keeps it from the top spot but it is um does have a an interesting lore to it about like the earth is an egg and it's gonna hatch this demon spawn thing if the ceremonies are conducted correctly uh it's a good read i liked it uh interview with the vampire by anna rice that is a classic a classic i have not read i'm not really interested in vampires um but you know what i it is kind of a beloved classic, so I feel kind of guilty for not having read it. So I'm going to put it in the maybe one day. Maybe one day I'll get around to it. I highly doubt it. Next up, A Choir of Children. This is a Southern Gothic. Southern Gothic is generally not uh, a subgenre that appeals to me. And this is a... a, a young man who's taking care of his younger brothers they're triplets that are joined at the head or something i i don't know that much about this book um but i'm gonna pass on it southern gothic yeah it doesn't work on me next up we have uh something wicked this way comes by ray bradbury now this is way way too low in the ranking from pace magazine this is a masterpiece masterpiece of horror right there no, i wouldn't i don't know if i'd call it horror it, it definitely lives in the horror universe it's more of a literary literary work coming of age about a father feeling bad because he's getting old and he can't really relate to his young son his young son he just he doesn't want to be young he wants to be an adult it's that kind of dichotomy there brilliant though and I almost uh, forgive uh, Ray Bradbury for Fahrenheit 451 because of that. Next up, The Terror by Dan Simmons. Everybody told me to read The Terror. Everybody said, oh, I love this book. And uh, I didn't read it. Instead, I read Caring and Comfort. And I didn't love Caring and Comfort. So now I've been reluctant to read The Terror. But 
I need to give Dan Simmons another chance, and I need to read the Terror. So maybe someday, and hopefully someday soon. Next up, we have American Psycho by Brett Easton Ellis. I would not consider this a horror book at all. I mean, it's horrific, and there's blood in it, but it's not horror. Um, I didn't love this book. It's very dated. It's very early 90s. Um, and I, fortunately, I read it in the early 2000s, and it had already been quite dated by then. Uh, but it's not terrible. It's not a fail. So there are worse ways to die, I suppose. Next up, we have The Silence of the Lambs by Thomas Harris. Uh, I've not read this book. I did see the movie. quite like the movie. Uh, but this is kind of a procedural. Serial killer procedural. And that's not a... That's not a genre that interests someone. So I will never read that book. Pet Cemetery by Stephen King. I am currently reading Pet Cemetery. So that is in the maybe someday I will finish it uh, probably next month sometime. It's a, it's a big book and I'm taking my time with it. Next up we have Hell House by Matheson. Richard Matheson. Hell House is a goofy book from the early 1970s. Uh, yeah, psychics battling a ghost. It's super goofy. Uh, I didn't love it, but I also expected something different when I read it. I expected something serious, kind of scary, but it's definitely neither of those things. But it's not bad. It's well written, well paced. If you go into it knowing it's super goofy, have fun with it. Next up is Stephen King, The Stand. I have not read this book. This book is 900 pages, post-apocalyptic quest book. Stephen King is pretty hit or miss with me. And uh, I don't want, I don't have enough confidence in Stephen King to read 900 page, a 900 page book. I did it once with 11.22.63 and that book did not work on me. So I am quite reluctant to try again with these big, big books. I'm never going to read this then. Swan Song by Robert R. McCammon. Speaking of big books, a thousand pages and also post-apocalyptic. Now, I have not read this book. And if I put this in the no thank you, uh, Cliff over at Cliff's Dark Gems is never going to speak to me. Again. So I'll put it in the maybe someday. Because you never know. Maybe I will one day. Um, not likely, but maybe. Hope alive. Next up, Ghost Story by Peter Strobe. This is a highly celebrated book, a highly celebrated book that I did not enjoy. Uh, I, you know, normally I would put it up here in that there are worse ways to die because it's not as bad as my best friend's exorcism bird box. But because of the hype, the unwarranted hype, no, it's a fail. Caroline. By Neil Gaiman. Uh, this is a middle grade book that uh, is highly praised by everyone. It's, I always see it on lists of great horror books. I've never read it because I generally am not interested in middle grade. But it's so highly praised, I think I will eventually have to read it. Next up, we have Carrie and Comfort by Dan Simmons. This is a book that I didn't really get into. Um, but it's not bad. I mean, it's it's an action, action horror with these, like, mind vampires that can get inside people's heads and then control them, zombify, zombieify them and control them. Uh, but it's an it, action. It almost re it, uh, it reads a bit like a screenplay. A, screen, a very long screenplay to a, a TV series. Um, and I was expecting something more literary because all my friends who were recommending Dan Simmons were like literary snobs. So I went into that with the wrong expectations, but it's not about different worst ways to die. Next up, we have Broken Monsters, again by Lauren Bukes. Uh, so like um, The Shining Girls, this is another uh, serial killer book, and but it's set in Detroit. I'm not a big fan of like serial killer procedurals. It kind of it's on the border between procedural crime thriller and horror. And I didn't like Shining Girls enough to read something else by her. So I'm going to pass on that. Next up, we have The Elementals, another southern 
gothic from the 1980s. This didn't work on me at all. Like, people love this book. I mean, I should put it up there, but it, it did absolutely nothing for me. It's a ghost story, too. Um, I did like the setting. You know, it's on this dunes, sand dunes. And, but no, that book did nothing for me. Failed. Dracula. About time. Poor Jim. It's getting kind of thirsty. Dracula is a horror gem for me based on the opening, like the first third of the book. When we first meet Dracula and when we're in Hungary, when we're in Transylvania, that part is spectacular. spectacular. The middle section gets a little slow and the ending is too fast, but that, that opening is spectacular. Rosemary's Baby by Ira Levin. I love me some Ira Levin. It's not my favorite Ira Levin book, but it's a good book. It has a great combination of camp, scares, psychological and supernatural. Really dig it. Next up, we have Turn of the Screw. Now, this is a ghost story, so you know how I feel about ghost stories. But I got to be honest with you. It's not bad for what it is. It's not bad. There are worse ways to die. I mean, it is well written, but ugh, ghost. Next up, Salem's Lot by Stephen King. I have not read it. It's a vampire book. Not really interested in vampires. Uh, I'm not going to read Tale of Plot. I've heard good things about it. It's probably excellent. Next up, uh, Stephen King, The Shining. So, you guys are not going to like this, uh, but this is the most overrated book in the history of horror books. Um, this, is, You know, if, if it were just me, I'd probably put it in the fail, but I, I don't want to lose all of my subscribers. So, I'm going to put it in the There Are Worse Ways to Die. The Shining is not good. I'm sorry. It, maybe it's good, like, if you read it when you're a teenager, like 14, 15 years old, which is kind of the intention there. I didn't. I read it when I was, like, 40 years old, and it doesn't work on a 40-year-old. It's so silly, and it uh, just telegraphs everything. Yeah, it's, it, I did, and it was sloppy. I did not like that. I did like the sequel, though, uh, Dr. Sleep. did not like The Shining. Next up, Nosferatu. By Joe Hill. Everybody told me to read Nosferatu. They said, you would love this book, right? It's zany. It's inventive. This guy goes around and he snatches up children and then takes them to magical places to do horrible things to them. It's exactly your kind of thing, Michael. So I go to the bookstore to get it, and it's like 900 pages. Oh, no. But Joe Hill is, is a celebrated writer, and I was curious to read something by him. So instead, I read Horns. I did not like horns. So I've been reluctant to give Joe Hill another shot, but I probably should give him another shot. And if I do, it will be Nosferatu. So maybe someday. House of Leaves. Masterpiece of literature. Ah, House of Leaves. I cannot say enough good things about that book. That is so spectacular. It is a different kind of reading experience, though. You really need to take your time with it. It's not a book you can knock out in a few weeks. you got to take it slowly and just let it let it work on you. It's fantastic. Next up, we have Frankenstein. This book is terrible. How is this a classic? This is... Oh, this is not a... The problem is, like, this is taught in schools. But it's not a novel. It's an essay disguised as a novel, which itself is disguised as a series of letters this book is bad i mean it was written by a 19 year old girl so it's probably good for a 19 year old but there's it does not deserve its classic status the book is terrible you know maybe it makes for a good essay but it, just write an essay then okay the exorcist i have not read the exorcist and i have no intention of reading the exorcist i do not like exorcisms exorcisms are child abuse and i am baffled that we especially in this age of uh, cancel culture so i'm baffled that we still use exorcism as a like pop culture thing i know this was written in 1970 but, but that doesn't excuse my best friend's exorcism which is problematic on so many levels 
right, but no, I, I just don't have an interest in exorcisms. I've heard good things about that book, though. It's probably really good. Uh, Let the Right One In. I've also heard good things about this book. It is a vampire book involving children. I don't like vampires or children. But it's gotten so much good buzz that I will probably eventually maybe read it. It by Stephen King. It's another one of his doorstoppers. I've not read it. Nor will I ever read it. And lastly, we have The Haunting of Hill House. I love Shirley Jackson. Of course. Of course, that is a horror gem. Journey's End, where lovers meet. Is that the, is that the quote? Shakespeare quote from that book? So there you have it. Uh, so I'm very happy that we have more horror gems than we have fails. We only have six fails. Although Frankenstein should count as two because that's a hard fail. But we have... And I'm finished with the video. And just as I'm finished, Zvezda comes out to say hi. So before I close this video. Okay, maybe not. Well, there you have it. I'm sure that my opinions uh, do not uh, coincide perfectly with yours. But I am very curious to hear yours. So please uh, let me know how angry you are about terrible things I say about The Shining. Let me know in the comment section. I look forward to connecting with you there. Thank you for watching. I'll see you at the next video.